This is a parametric array family. The family length can be increased or decreased by adding or removing bays. The number of shelves on each bay can do the same. And using associated parameters, I can even alter the bay size by depth and length. In this tutorial, I unpack three key tips when building array families like the one demonstrated on screen. Stick around to find out more. Welcome to Power Surge, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content. This array family is made up of three parts. Nested components, constraints, and formulas. Together, these parts work with the array command to drive a parametric family as demonstrated on screen. Nested components. The key to using nested components in array families is to have their parameters set as instance. Let me show you what this means as I edit this nested shelf family. Instance parameters are appended with the word default. To make a parameter instance based, toggle this button. So what do instance parameters do? When this shell family is nested into another family, for example, this one mod family, the shelf's instance based parameters can be associated to the parameters in the host. On screen, the shelf family has been inserted and arrayed vertically. If I edit the array group and click on the nested shelf, I can now access its instance based parameters from within the host family. This enables parameter association and that creates a symbiotic relationship between the two. So much as so that if the length of the host family flexes, then the nested shelf family does also. In turn, when this one mod family is itself nested, the length parameter, which now also controls the shelf, can be further associated. This works because the parameters in the host family are also instance based. So with one parameter, I am actually flexing three families. So to sum it all up, nested components together with instance parameters enables this piggyback effect which then enables a symbiotic relationship for unprecedented control. Using this method has one drawback. When loaded into a project, the nested components are listed on the project browser as an ordinary family. So as a tip, I recommend using naming conventions that allows nested families to be easily identified within a project. The underscore means level one underscore V means level two. This helps the end user understand that these families should not be deleted and that they are in fact part of a hosted family. Constraints. Back in the host family and switching to a plan view, I can toggle this button to reveal the family's constraints. Constraints are, in other words, locks. On screen, Reference planes have been shown red, meaning that components have been aligned by force to them and restricted their movement. Now I will remove the constraints to show you what happens. I will move the second component, which is the first repeat in the array. I will move it up 100mm to break the constraint. On the warning that pops up, I choose remove constraint. This means the selected component is no longer locked to the center horizontal reference plane. Then I move up to the family types control where I can increase the number of bays. So what's happened here is that the pattern has repeated. The array has maintained the 100 mil step along the length of the family.
back in plan view, I will delete the original instances and show you how to properly align arrayed families. Start by placing the loaded components anywhere near the middle of the reference lines. Then select the component and make any required associations. This will help when constraining the nested components to the array constraints. Using the Align tool, find the horizontal mid-reference of the host and align it to the equivalent horizontal reference line in the nested component. Be sure to lock it in place as shown, then repeat the steps for the vertical references. Now select the Aligned instance and move up to the Array command on the ribbon which is part of the Modify tools. On the Options bar, pick Second. Then copy the starting point for the second instance from the first instance. Then use the Align tool to lock the second instance in place as shown. Be sure to align and lock to the reference line and not the first family instance. Now finalize by aligning the second instance horizontally to stop it from stepping out of sequence. Now I can remove the end instance as it is not needed for this demonstration and we can flex the array to test the aligning has been completed correctly. Formulas. These are rules that define how the family flexes. Formulas are used in dimensions and parameters to drive and control the content. One very typical example of this is by using conditional statements. That is to define actions in a family that depend on the state of other parameters. For example, forcing an array of one. By default, this is not possible. Doing so will break the family. But there is a way. Let's unpack how to achieve an array of one. The first step is to create a parameter that drives the array length. Then create a second integer parameter for the end user to toggle. The two parameters should be separate. As I open the family types control, notice the highlighted parameters and their associated formulas. The first thing to point out here is that these have been categorized under a heading that is not commonly used. This is so that the end user just has to be concerned with the number of base parameter up here. These parameters are all linked together via some conditional formulas. Remember that means that their actions are defined by the state of other parameters within the family. Let's unpack this a little more. As previously shown, the array parameter cannot have a value of 1, otherwise the family will break. In our parameters list, there are also two visibility parameters, here and here. These parameters work in tandem with the user toggle to override the graphics should this value be set to 1. Let's understand how this works. There are two instances, a single bay instance and an array instance, one for each of the visibility overrides. As I deselect array, then the array system is not visible. And if I then switch and deselect the single bay instance, the opposite is true. This can all be tied together with some conditional formulas. Starting with the single bay instance, type number of bays is less than 2. This means if the value here is less than 2, then the single bay instance will be visible. If the value is 2 or greater, then this instance will not be visible. To close this out, we can add a formula to the array instance as well. Here we state the condition which is if the number of bays is not less than 2. And then we add a simple test to force the yes for true and the no for false. In other words, is 2 greater than 1? Yes. And is 1 greater than 2? No. 
So in other words, if this is on, then this should be off and vice versa. Once the conditional statements are defined, we can align the instances into the same place. Once that is done, there is one final step to clarify. The formula for the array driver. In the family types control, the formula shows that this parameter is dependent on the number of bays toggle. To demonstrate, let's unpack what this means for the formula. The statement is asking if the number of Bayes parameter has a value of less than 2. But the value here is dependent on the number of Bayes parameter up here. So we run a test to check the condition here and the value is 3. So the result of the test is false and the response is to force the value here to match the number of bays up here. This in turn also turns off the single bay instance. Now let's look at how this works if the number of bays has a value of one. Again, starting at the top, the statement is if the number of bays parameter has a value of less than two. So let's check that parameter value and it is set to one. So the result is true. If the result is true, then the formula should default the value here to the number two. This will stop the family from breaking and at the same time, turn off the array instance and turn on the single bay instance. Now that we understand the formulas, let's see the completed family in action. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and that you found this video interesting. If you did, remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.